Hello, my name is Pasha, I work for the BBC and I do a lot of DJing in my spare time. Originally I come from Moscow, but most of my family lives in New York now. Today I'm talking to people about their families. Tell me about your family. I have a very large family. I live with my mother and my stepfather in Brighton, England. I have six brothers and sisters, of which I'm the eldest, and I have a lot of responsibility to look after them. <laughs> so I live with my mum and my sister and my dad. My sister is 15 years old, and we're really close. We're a happy little family. I have quite a small family. Uh, I only have one sister. She's two years younger than me. Uh, and then there's my parents who live very close to me. All of my grandparents have died, sadly. I'm the middle child. I have an older brother and a younger brother, um, and my parents are still together. Um, I get on with them brilliantly. They're a great family. My dad's Mexican, and my mum is from London. Um, and they, my mum met my dad in Mexico. They moved over to England 25 years ago. And I've got a sister who's two years older than me. Well, my family lives in Canada, in Toronto, Canada. I have a mother and sister. Uh, my father passed away about 20 years ago, so it's just the three of us, uh, somewhat of a small family. In what ways are you like your parents or siblings? I look a lot like my mum. We have like the same height and build and face structure, and I guess I have the same traits as her. We sort of have a very similar personality in the way we think about things, the way we express ourselves. I don't think I'm very much like my sister. I think she's very different from me. I think I'm similar to my father. We both have a, a mathematical science type mind. Um, and I like to think I'm conscientious like my mother. I look quite a lot like my sister, but she's like a younger version of me and she's thinner. And then my mum, she's a bit more uh, reserved, so she's very organised. And my dad is a lot louder, a lot more enthusiastic. Um, I'm quite calm, like my dad, and but can get quite, um, I think, maybe passionate, like my mum. I'm not very like my brothers. Um, they're very similar to each other, but I'm quite different. I'm, they're more like my mum, I'm more like my dad. What do you know about your family history? Well, my name's Brogan, and it's supposed to be Scottish or Irish, but I have no idea where it's really from. Well, my family history goes quite, goes quite a long way back on my father's side. Um, certainly about four or five hundred years, he's Scottish. So it's from southwest Scotland, very close to Ireland. My mother was adopted. Um, she and her twin sister were adopted, and we've only managed to go back one generation to the northwest of England. I actually uh, started to retrace my family roots uh, last year, so I went to Northern Ireland, to Belfast, and actually found some very inf interesting information about my grandparents. Found uh, the house that my great-grandfather built and where my grandfather was, uh, was born. I don't know very much about my family history, but I'd like to look into it in the future. Hi, I'm Val, and I work for the BBC here in London. I read a lot of news stories for my job, and I get my news from lots of different sources. Today, I'm going to be asking people about the media and about truth. How do you find out what's happening in the world? Um, I find out about what's happening by reading the news on the internet. Um, I use Twitter a lot for quite a fast um, look at all of the latest news. I listen to the radio, watch the TV, and read the newspapers. I mainly find out through the internet uh, and also speaking with people. It can be from my neighbours or it can be from newspapers or internet. Just general day-to-day -day talk, I suppose. Well, I usually listen to the radio in the morning and I often listen to news programmes and then I frequently go on the internet and look at a range of websites. Do you always believe what you see or read in the news? No, not always. Um, I think the news in Britain is quite good um, for giving you as much honesty as they have, but I don't always believe that their sources are being honest. I think it would be very risky business to believe everything that you, uh, that you read or saw on t television, for example. No, I think you have to distinguish between what's fact and what's opinion. Absolutely not. <laughs> I come from Africa, so I don't because um, depending on what the news is, sometimes it can be a little bit biased, sometimes it can be tinged with self-interest. So no, I don't. I don't believe what's what I read. 
I work as a doctor and I know that quite a lot of the health stories, which are very big in the media and often get headline grabbing attention, turn out to be actually not, uh, they're often quite misleading. So I suppose I'm a fairly critical consumer. When is it okay to tell a lie? I think it's okay to lie sometimes to protect the feelings of another person. You don't want to tell the truth to a kid about something wrong that happened, that you don't want to scare a kid. Um, there are some lies that are necessary, I think. Yeah. Well, in general, I think it's not a good idea telling lies because it destroys relationships. But I suppose telling white lies, when my wife says, uh, what do I look like in this new dress? Sometimes I'm not going to be strictly honest. I think it's okay to tell a lie when it's not harming anyone directly. Tell me about a time you told a lie. My husband made a dish that I didn't really like. And I just thought, you know, I'm not going to say this isn't nice, it's salty, because he'd made an effort. If I'm late for a class um, or a meeting with the supervisor, I might blame it on the transport say the train was delayed when actually I should have left earlier. I remember on one occasion um, in China being asked whether I enjoyed the food and of course I said yes I thought it was delicious when it actually was not uh, and that was to my detriment because of course in China they then serve you with even more food. Hi, I have too many friends to stay in touch by phone so I use a lot of social networking sites instead. Today, I'm finding out how people feel about modern communication. How do you like to stay in touch with your friends? The main way that I keep in contact with my friends is via email, um, and I also use mobile phone. I like face-to-face -face contacts best, um, so that's always my preference. But otherwise, um, I speak on the phone, um, write letters, send emails. I think it's really important to stay in touch with friends. So uh, I've got a really close group of friends that we have dinner once a month. We do a kind of round robin, you know, we each take turns to cook for each other. So we do that regularly. I keep in contact with my friends via email. Well, I used to use an awful lot of postcards and letters, but of course that's now email. Email, I still write letters, <laughs> um, same text messages and phone calls. Uh, my phone, my phone is my lifeline use it for everything. I hate computers. Has modern technology helped us to communicate better? No. I think we think we can communicate better, but I think it just masks our um, fear of um, communicating in an honest and open way. We're able to make contact with someone via mobile phone instantaneously. It's given us more options. Um, I'm a bit of a technophobe, though. Um, I don't use social networking sites. Uh, I haven't got on the whole kind of Twitter bandwagon. Um, so I know that that's there for me to use if I wanted to, but I tend not to bother. In theory, it should be better, but in practice, sometimes you just have to speak to somebody on the phone. It has, if it comes to just um, communication, like remote communication, it has helped greatly. But on the flip side, I think it hasn't because it's reduced a lot of physical contact, face-to-face -face contact. And I think a lot of people still feel isolated, even though we communicate a lot more than ever before. No, I think it's probably made it a lot worse as people don't talk face-to-face -face as much and they just rely on text speak and things and points don't get put across as well if you're not speaking face-to-face. What kinds of problems can modern communication cause? I think modern communication can cause a lot of different problems. Um, a common one would be to email the wrong person, I think. I've done that a few times myself. Emails, I, I tend to, between my teachers, I always write the wrong things and don't send the right work and send all the wrong stuff to all the wrong people and get all my contact list wrong. It's so much easier to be misunderstood you know, if you're just writing an email, for example. When I was working, I remember sending a really important email to the chair of governors at the school where I worked, and I was typing quickly at the end, and I was signing it my name, which is Sarah, and I typed Satan by mistake <laughs> and sent it. Hi, I'm a 
producer at the BBC and I really enjoy my job. I'm not sure it's my dream job because I've always wanted to be in a successful band, but it's pretty good. Today, I'm going to be talking to people about dream jobs. What do you do? I'm a school teacher. I am uh, a minister with the Salvation Army. I'm a stand-up comedian. I make French horns, the musical instrument, and I repair other brass instruments. I'm an architectural technologist, and I design and build houses. I finished my degree in education, and I will be teaching history and math. I'm a student. Um, I'm a student nurse. What did you dream of doing or being when you were younger? I've always wanted to be a teacher. My dad was a teacher. My brother is a teacher. I want to be a footballer. That's what I wanted to do. I wanted to play for Liverpool or Arsenal. And I was quite good, but not good enough. When I was a child, I dreamt of being a professional cellist and performing to whatever audience I could within orchestras or on my own as a soloist. I always wanted to build things and design houses, and so now it's part of my everyday life, and it's kind of good. When I was a child, uh, most of the time I wanted to teach. For a while, I wanted to be a pediatrician, so a doctor for children. I wanted to be a vet, um, and then a solicitor. Well, as a child, I used to play lots of guitar, so I dream, dreamt of becoming, starting a band and becoming a world-famous guitarist. When I was younger, I loved sports, and I envisioned some kind of a career in sports, professionally perhaps. Uh, later on, I was thinking of business in the business realm, and uh, finally, I came away with uh, serving people. That was my dream job, and I get to do that through the Salvation Army. Would you describe your job as a dream job? Yeah, it is a dream job, especially when it goes well. Every day is a different day, and we do different things every day, so... Yeah, I would say it was a dream job, really, yeah. To be working within the music industry, for me, is a dream, and I'm working with a lot of professional musicians, and I see it as it's helping me achieve my overall dream, so, yes. I would say nursing can be hard work, but it is um, a dream job, because you get quite a lot of satisfaction, job satisfaction. Yes, definitely. I, I feel it. it allows me to be creative, and I get to do what I always wanted to do. Are you ambitious? Yes, I am ambitious. I like to take control and make things happen for myself, and in this profession I get to do a lot of things like that. I like to think I am. Um, I'm living in Paris right now, and that was always a dream of mine. Um, I was once, I think, but <laughs> not so much now. I mean, I'm more ambitious for myself now in, in developing my own art rather than developing other people's art. I want to get quite high up in my job. I want to be on good money and live in a nice house. Hi, I'm not a very practical person. I don't like DIY or fixing problems with my bike. I do help my friends to sort out their emotional problems though. Today, I'm talking to people about solving problems. Would you describe yourself as a practical person? Yeah, I think I am a practical person, yeah. I do quite a lot of DIY around the house. I've just um, done up my uh, flat, so um, I'm quite hands-on um, and I'm quite practical in my job as well. I work for a charity, so I think um, I'm quite solutions-focused and I like to think I'm practical. Yes, I would. I don't like um, just thinking about things. I like having a practical solution. Uh, yes, I'm a practical person. Um, yes, I'm a very practical person, I think, yeah. With some things, yes. Most of the time. Most of the time I'm quite practical, yeah. What kinds of problems are you good at solving? Um, well, I'm a project manager in my role in an advertising agency, so um, the problems I suppose I'm good at solving are other people's problems. For example, if we go on holiday, um, fitting lots of different things into the car boot, my husband will sit and waffle about it or think about it and not do it, whereas I'll just go and get on and fit all these different things in. When things break down, like machines, domestic appliances, uh, really, I'm a handyman. Anything that isn't mechanical, I suppose. Um, interpersonal problems and sort of psychological 
things is usually what I'm best at solving. I'm good at solving a wide range of problems and uh, that includes emotional problems for family and friends. What kinds of problems are you not so good at solving? I'm not so good at solving problems that involve difficult people that you can't change. My own problems, you know, relationships and problems at home and you know, stuff that you can't avoid. I'm not good with um, problems with cars and I'm not good with um, reading maps. Anything to do with cars or machinery. If you could have one superpower, what would it be and why? Wow, if I could have anything at all. I think I'd like to know when people are telling the truth. I think I'd like to be able to see into the future and not make the mistakes that I have made. I would love to make everybody nice. <laughs> I think it would be something to do with being able to predict the future of financial markets. Um, invisibility. Um, just... I can avoid problems. <laughs> the superpower I would love to have at the moment is to be able to do 10 things at the same time. And um, that's because I've just had a baby, and um, so I'm always running around. I guess it will be a power to heal every disease, because I don't like to see people suffering. Hello. I'm in a really good mood today. The sun is out, and that always brings a smile to my face. How are you feeling today? I'm feeling stressed due to a lot of work. I'm feeling quite happy and confident. The weather certainly helps. It's a bright sunny day, so I'm feeling quite optimistic. I'm excited about my project for school. We're doing a documentary on film. I'm feeling pretty good. <laughs> I'm feeling good because um, I'm on a day out with my friend and we're having a fun time. <laughs> Very happy, very relaxed. Uh, we have a day off, my wife and I. I've uh, had a good start to my day. I woke up early and I had a good breakfast, so I suppose I'm feeling well balanced and optimistic about my afternoon. Today's a good day. Uh, visiting from New York. Really good. It's a beautiful day, the sun's shining, and uh, I'm just wandering about London. It's nice. Would you describe yourself as an optimist or a pessimist? 100% optimist. I think that you always have to look on the bright side, and I know it's cheesy, but it's best to think what you can do, not what you could have done. I think I'm an optimist. I, I think generally I look on the bright side. Hopefully I see the best in people. Don't expect bad, you know, disasters or, 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 or to be let down in things. I'd say I swing between the two. I mean, I, I'm pretty optimistic about my, myself. I'm very optimistic. Um, whenever I get um, in a tricky situation, I might get a bit frustrated at first, but I always manage to pull myself through and think of the positives. I consider myself to be more of a functional pessimist. Um, I do tend to plan and cater for the worst case, but more often than not, I'm happily surprised when things go well. Probably an optimist, but I like to be realistic about things and then I'm not disappointed. I think uh, I'm, an, I'm an optimist. What's the best thing that's happened to you this year? The best thing that has happened to me in the last 12 months is the success of the business that my wife and I opened in Oxford last June. The best thing that's happened to me this year is the success of having the garden, growing vegetables and flowers. I got all distinctions, all distinction stars and A stars in my um, last project in art. I went to Canada to visit my father with my boyfriend um, a couple of weeks ago and that was really nice. We got to see lots of amazing sights. Um, getting into university. It was really um, difficult because there was a like there's a lot of applicants um, at very high standard and I managed to uh, get a spot. I met my my boyfriend. Well I didn't meet him actually. I met him years ago but we got together and became a couple which is good. Uh, so I think that's the best thing that's happened uh, this year for me. The best thing that happened to me this year was getting a job um, as a trainee solicitor at a firm in London. I'm really excited about it. It's very difficult to get into and it's um, like the culmination of a lot of hard work over a long time. So I'm really happy about it. Hello. I'm in a really good mood today. The sun is out and that always brings a smile to my face. How are you feeling today? I'm feeling stressed due to a lot of work. 
I'm feeling quite happy and confident. The weather certainly helps. It's a, a bright sunny day, so I'm, I'm feeling quite optimistic. I'm excited about my project for school. We're doing a documentary on film. I'm feeling pretty good. <laughs> I'm feeling good because um, I'm on a day out with my friend and we're having a fun time. <laughs> Very happy, very relaxed. Uh, we have a day off, my wife and I. I've uh, had a good start to my day. I woke up early and I had a good breakfast, so I suppose I'm feeling well balanced and optimistic about my afternoon. Today's a good day. Uh, visiting from New York. Really good. It's a beautiful day, the sun's shining, and uh, I'm just wandering about London. It's nice. Would you describe yourself as an optimist or a pessimist? 100% optimist. I think that you always have to look on the bright side and I know it's cheesy but it's best to think what you can do not what you could have done. I think I'm an optimist. I, I think generally I look on the bright side. Hopefully I see the best in people. Don't expect bad you know, disasters or, 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 or to be let down in things. I'd say I swing between the two. I mean I, I'm pretty optimistic about my, myself. I'm very optimistic. Um, whenever I get um, in a tricky situation, I might get a bit frustrated at first, but I always manage to pull myself through and think of the positives. I consider myself to be more of a functional pessimist. Um, I do tend to plan and cater for the worst case, but more often than not, I'm happily surprised when things go well. Probably an optimist, but I like to be realistic about things and then I'm not disappointed. I think uh, I'm, an, I'm an optimist. What's the best thing that's happened to you this year? The best thing that has happened to me in the last 12 months is the success of the business that my wife and I opened in Oxford last June. The best thing that's happened to me this year is the success I've had in the garden growing vegetables and flowers. I got all distinctions, all distinction stars and A stars in my um, last project in art. I went to Canada to visit my father with my boyfriend um, a couple of weeks ago and that was really nice. We got to see lots of amazing sights. Um, getting into university. It was really um, difficult because there was a like there's a lot of applicants um, at very high standard and I managed to uh, get a spot. I met my my boyfriend. Well I didn't meet him actually. I met him years ago but we got together and became a couple which is good. Uh, so I think that's the best thing that's happened uh, this year for me. The best thing that happened to me this year was getting a job um, as a trainee solicitor at a firm in London. I'm really excited about it. It's very difficult to get into and it's um, like the culmination of a lot of hard work over a long time. So I'm really happy about it. Hi. There are a lot of things that I'd like to do that I've never done before. I'm not really a daredevil, so things like bungee jumping are not really my cup of tea. But I do know that trying new things makes you feel good. Today, I'm going to talk to people about trying new things and achievement. How do you feel about trying new things? I'm up for trying new things. Depends what they are, obviously. Um, there's some things I wouldn't try, but I'd give most things a go. I always enjoy trying new things. I like to meet new people and try new food, see new places, see different things. It's always nice to see that. I love to try new things. I love to travel. If you try new things, you get more out of life, I think. I'm always up for new things. I love traveling. I love trying exotic new foods, all that sort of stuff, seeing new cultures. What stops you from trying new things? Fear, probably. Time and money complicates trying new things. It's hard to find time to travel, and it's hard to afford enough money to travel as well. Uh, I suppose if it was dangerous and I could get injured. Probably at the moment, school, I don't have a lot of time. I've got a lot of work money as well. If it's very dangerous or if my stomach just can't handle it or if I don't have money. <laughs> what have you achieved in your life that makes you feel proud? I'm very proud that I was able to go to Ethiopia and build houses for people who needed it and being a part of that team was really special to me. I've written plays and people come to see the plays and enjoyed them and I've, I've gone out and performed in front of, uh, I suppose, thousands of people now and, uh, and they've laughed. I guess um, finishing school um, with a high level and so far not a lot, but I've learned French better than I thought I would, so I'm proud of that, I guess. I'm still learning. 
probably proudest achievements is getting A grades in my end of year exams, helping me to get a place at university. Well, I feel that I've become uh, quite a good person, and I guess I'm proud of that. Who do you admire for their achievements and why? Probably business leaders such as Richard Branson, um, as he started off, you know, as, as hardly anything and then he built a huge business empire and he's a multi-millionaire. I admire my grandmother, actually. She's not around anymore, but she was a teacher, like I want to be, and she taught me so much about life. Nelson Mandela, I admire him a lot because, uh, not only because he was in prison, which, uh, and he survived that for many years and wasn't bitter, when he came out of prison, I was more impressed with him becoming, you know, leading South Africa and holding the country together and changing a country. Not many people uh, have the ability or the skills to do that. Hi, I live in a block of flats and I know a few of my neighbours really well. We like similar things so we socialise quite a lot. Today I'm going to ask people about their neighbours. How well do you know your neighbours? Um, I know my neighbours quite well. I moved in a year ago and I live in the middle flat and it's a house that's broken into three flats. Um, the guys upstairs moved in a year ago as well and um, the guys downstairs have been there for a few years. But we all have a communal garden um, so we get to use that space together. It varies enormously. One or two really quite well. Some very close. I don't even know what they look like. And that is very typical of this area. I live just around the corner from here. Very typical of inner city, urban London. Uh, virtually not at all. Um, I've, uh, I live in a flat and I moved into the flat about uh, six months ago. Yeah, I, I know him quite well, but I don't... I, some I get on with and some I don't. Some I want to get on with and some I don't want to get on with. Um, not at all. <laughs> I've never even seen him. <laughs> um, no, I don't know him at all, quite honestly. What makes a good neighbour? A good neighbour is someone that you can trust, that you could leave your key with, that you could ask to water your plants or feed your cat. I think what makes a good neighbour is someone who looks out for you uh, and you look out for them as well. Knowing when to interfere and not to interfere, being friendly at the right times but not being intrusive. A good neighbour would be someone who's considerate, um, who always keeps in mind that they're li they do have neighbours whether it be noise or trash, just keeping up their property, making it a nice place that people will want to come home to. Someone who you can trust and who doesn't cause you any grief. What about a bad neighbour? A bad neighbour is someone that forgets that you exist as well and it has loud music until 6am. Not respecting privacy, intruding. Um, not understanding what your neighbour wants, and not just in that sense, but in the sense of not participating, not doing things when a neighbour needs help. Someone who is not considerate, who, whether it's a lot of noise or a lot of trash, doesn't upkeep their property, um, who's not really friendly. Tell me about the best or worst neighbour you've ever had. Um, she was a lady who lived above me, and she was very quiet, very nice. She would oftentimes come and kind of check on me, see if I'm okay. So we would kind of chit-chat. So I got to know her pretty well, which was pretty nice. The worst neighbour I've ever had lived next door to me uh, in the last house I was in, uh, and he was just very noisy all the time, day, day and night. You were constantly, constantly aware of him. One night I was, um, about 8 o'clock, I heard a noise outside, I opened the windows, and a loud voice said, get down, crouch down. And it was a, a, clearly a policeman. Um, and I had to say crouch down. And my garden at the back, three policemen shot in and shot over the wall, and it turned out that I was living next to the number two in the main criminal gang in North London. And they were arrested and taken away. Hi, I enjoy reading about the past but I'm very happy to live in the modern world with all its freedom and the opportunities we have. Today, I'm talking to people about the past and how history has influenced our lives. Do you think life is better now than in the past? As a woman, it's infinitely better now. You know, you've got birth control, you've got education, you've got the right to vote. There's no way I'd want to live in the past. 
I do think life is better now. Um, I think the, the improvements in technologies, uh, the general infrastructure, internet, um, you know, cars, roadways, health, health improvements and uh, scientific improvements in medicine have kind of enabled us to, to have a better life now than in the past. I'm a person of today and enjoy my life today. Probably in the past. It's got more values in the past than it has now. Everything's all far too fast now. I think life is better, was, was better in the past. Um, today, I don't really think there's, there are many great causes to believe in, whereas in the past, people's imaginations were a lot more fired up. I think our society's become much more materialistic and consumption focused, and I think that's a bad thing. Because at the end of the day, people think it's all about money, but actually it's not. It's about your health and your friends and your family. If you could have lived through a different age or decade, which would you choose and why? If I could have lived in another age, I'd like to have lived in the 18th century. I think it was a, they had beautiful houses, they had beautiful clothes, the furniture was fantastic, but also the world was opening up, people were exploring it. I would have loved to live in the 1950s, in all this Christian Dior era. I know it was a very ladylike look, and in terms of fashion, that's something that I would have died to live in that era. Coming from the United States, I would probably say the uh, late 60s, 1970s. Uh, there was a major cultural revolution there, uh, improvements in music, a lot of movement there. I would definitely love to have lived in the 20s as a flapper, drinking martinis that would have been excellent, dancing to jazz. The 60s is a decade that I would like to have lived in. I think there were a lot more causes to believe in than there are nowadays. Things aren't as inspiring. In your opinion, what historical events or people have changed the course of history? People off the top of my head would be Winston Churchill, quite definitely, um, Princess Diana. The philosopher Friedrich Nietzsche, I think the way he thought about um, why we believe certain things, why we behave in certain ways, transformed the way people live their lives. Um, I think a key historical event was the moon landing, because it gave people a bigger focus than just the Earth. For me, I would say the American uh, War of Independence, just because it helped define America as a nation and uh, created our identity you know, to the rest of the world, which can be seen through to today. Oh, definitely, the uh, September 11. The war is something before and after September 11. Hi, today I'm talking to people about what's happening in the world and issues that concern them. What do you think are the biggest challenges facing the world today? I think one of the biggest challenges facing the world today would be world or global poverty. The economy and I guess the environment is the, is the main ones that I would say. There's, there's loads. So uh, poverty, global warming. Uh, I think anything that ultimately is driven by uh, profit, probably. Um, I think our environmental impact is um, a big social issue, issue that is facing the world at the moment and I'm not sure that it's high enough on the agenda with politicians and globally and it's something that we should be addressing um, before it's too late. Apart from poverty, I'd say food. Um, I think sort of environmental pollution, um, terrorism's a problem and the economy is pretty bad right now so that's a problem too. I would have to say maybe greed. Um, Everyone seems to want more and more and more and never satisfied, which oftentimes leads to corruption and for the have-nots to have even less. So I think that's a big uh, reoccurring problem today. Uh, well, probably one of them is, uh, is energy. Uh, I think uh, possibly nations should uh, try and um, discover some sort of alternative fuel as the fossil fuels will be running out in approximately 50 years time. If you could do one thing to change the world, what would it be? Um, probably rectify global poverty. Eh? Stop all the wars, make everybody live in peace, in harmony. If people chat more, um, then I'll be able to understand their viewpoint. Hopefully they'll understand my viewpoint. Hopefully less conflict, whether it's over poverty, whether it's over global warming, whether it's over any other physical conflict as well. So people chat need to chat more. I would like to see more women in power. I'd like to see more women prime ministers because 
for some reason I think that they would have a more nurturing um, response to things and perhaps have better ways of dealing with all sorts of world issues such as war. Wind farms, um, we've got lots of uh, wind in this country and in places like Denmark, uh, so we could use that as a possible source of fuel. We need to get more countries agreeing with each other uh, because I think eventually the, the, the world is going to run out of natural resources and we have to get together to sort it out. Sort of giving food, uh, medicine or education to the world's poor, I think that would be a good idea. I don't know, kind of have everybody live in each other's shoes sometimes. I think sometimes we kind of are quick to judge and not always know what other people are going through. So that would be a, a good little thing to have, to be able to switch the roles sometimes. It's not always easier on the other side.